Okay, so this is my second attempt at recording this video. Um, I basically recorded the entire thing. I had the voice, um, I went through all the photos, and then I realized I never pressed record my screen. So, <laughs> let's start again. We are starting today with two images. This is the first one, this is the second one. So we're going to get right into it, this is the second time. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I am going to close up to her face first. Um, our model was lovely Abby on the day, by the way. So I'm going to grab a brush that is a similar color to her skin. So I'm just going to sample that. I'm going to put the flow on maybe around 3%. Okay, um, so I'm going to make the brush a bit smaller. I am going to go over the skin. I need to make sure that, you know, everything is kind of nice and polished. Um, that the model looks nice and glowy and beautiful because you know it is it is a bridal tutorial so you want the girls to relate to it and be like oh this is the way i want to look on my wedding day i'm going to move on to her arm you don't have to be particularly careful um the brush that we are using we're using on low opacity so um i'm sorry low flow so we can be quite kind of you know careless with it if i can call it this way okay now that we've treated the skin um abby has great skin there isn't much to do with it so next i am going to move into liquify and what i'm going to do is i'm going to liquify the hair a bit to kind of make it look very kind of old hollywood okay so i'm pushing out the curls a tiny bit just as i said to give it the kind of um old hollywood kind of perfect perfectly shaped uh, wave as you see the hair is pretty good to start with so again you know not that much work but i kind of like doing that to like push the hair and make it look slightly bit bigger i'm going to push this little bit in here um, and as you see the hair looks quite nice so i'll just show you before and after so it's very subtle you don't want to be you know dramatic with the, with those things it's literally about perfecting stuff and not changing it completely so once we have that done, I'm going to grab the stamp tool at around 43-50%. So as you see, I'm just sampling the flowers and I'm just getting rid of any of those kind of loose little hairs. That's all that needs. Um, okay, I'm just going to grab my patch tool and I'm just going to go over the little line under her eye. I wouldn't call it a dark circle. So I'm just going to go over that. Perfect. There's like a little spot there. And that's pretty much it. As I said, Abby's skin is perfect, so easy job. Okay, so I'm going to start with my adjustments. I'm going to start with the curve layer. I'm going to work on highlights and shadows. So first I'm going to increase the highlights and then deepen the shadows a tiny bit. Then I'm going to go with another curves uh, layer and I'm going to do a bit of contrast. You don't want to go too much, um, you know, you don't want to go too contrasty because it just kind of ruins the image, so Okay, now I am going to go to selective color because I find the colors are slightly bit warm for my liking Especially in the shadows, so I'm just going to ba balance it a bit. I'm going to go to my blacks I'm going to Put a tiny bit of blue in and maybe a tiny bit of green in the shadows i just think it kind of balances it nicely maybe not too much just maybe minus two i'm going to leave the cyans as they are i'm going to go to neutral um i actually kind of like the way the image is so i'm go just going to leave it there and then with the highlights i'm going to go slightly bit yellow and maybe slightly green again you just have to be careful not to change the color of the dress too much um you know if you feel like drastically changing the color of the image but you want to keep dressed a certain way um then you know obviously you can just mask it out afterwards um just bear in mind when you're doing any sort of uh, editorial when you work with clothes um the advertisers or the people that give you the clothes they don't want their colors changed because there has been many times where the you know people that buy the magazine will come back and say oh, you know, this is not the same color as in the magazine, and then the magazine gets in trouble. So just bear that in mind. If the dress is pure white, try not to change it into, you know, like yellow or green or whatever color, because it might get you in trouble. But um, a subtle little color like that is fine. Um, it's, um, it's very delicate anyway. Okay, so we have those little lines here that I want to fix. Um, it's nothing major. It's not really like creases or anything, but what I'll do, I'll just um, grab the stamp tool just make sure you're on the background layer. I'm going to go to flow, maybe like 10, something very subtle, because there's slight, uh, um, slight color difference. I mean, this is very bright and then the back is very dark. 
so I'm just sampling the bright color and just going over that part a tiny bit you see you have to be very careful not to overdo it or also what you can do because the um, dress doesn't have any texture you can just grab the sampler on the white and just go over the shaded area we shot um, in front of a window it was all natural light so um, as you see the back will be slightly darker so as you see it looks pretty good already um, what I'll do I will grab new layer I'll press alt and new layer and then I'm going to go to um, soft light and then I'll select 50% gray okay and then I'm just going to work on you know subtle highlights and shadows there isn't too many of them it's especially in the hair um, my flow is fine on 3% so I'll just go over the areas that I want slightly darker um, and then I don't know if you can see it on the screen but there is this area here that I find particularly annoying so I'm just going to brighten it a tiny bit with the white brush just so it kind of disappears and makes the hair look way more cool so now that I have the brights on I can just add a tiny bit of highlights if you see the little glossy bends in the hair that's where it's good to add any highlights and then I'm going to go over the cheekbone here over the brow bone a bit too far so brow bone um, any highlights at nose maybe top of the lips maybe a tiny bit on the lips I might add a tiny little um, highlight on her arm just a tiny bit again you want to be subtle okay um, now I might actually create another curve layer what I'll do I'll go darker on the entire image but then I am going to mask out certain parts of the skin that I want slightly lighter so it only gives you um, it almost gives you like this highlighted effect sorry for the noise outside the window um, okay so I might put the flow up a tiny bit higher so maybe 16 yeah that's good and I'll just go very you know you don't have to be very particular again it's not a beauty shot where you have to be very very careful with stuff okay um so now that that's done i might add a little hue saturation layer on it just maybe plus 10 and yet again i think i'm going to mask out the skin because i don't want it too yellowy or too red or you know any of those so i'm just going to go very quickly over the skin again you don't have to be particular because the area is quite large it's not a strong adjustment so it doesn't change it um, drastically so it's okay and the last step is just sharpening you shouldn't really go over um, 2.6 in radius and then the amount depends on the photo because we shot on 1.8 um, the image is quite soft so I think a good bit of sharpening will work wonders okay perfect so that's saved that's done our other image um, it's image from the same editorial um, I'm just gonna want to show you how I work between the images to make sure that I keep everything consistent so what I'm going to do uh, first I'm just going to do exactly the same thing as I did with the previous image I'm going to start on the skin usually with um, bridal editorial um, it doesn't take as long to do those images as I said because they aren't beauty and because you know it's kind of all about being natural and soft and so on so um, an image like a, a wedding image like this will take me between I'd say 20 to 30 minutes to retouch I'm going to go to liquify I am going to adjust the hair ever so slightly so again kind of like I did in the previous image you just always have to be aware of lines so if there's any lines in the photos make sure not to bend it with liquify okay now I see this little break in the hair here so I'm just going to grab my um, stamp tool and I'm just going to go over um, and then I'm going to just go over those tiny little hairs that I see there it should be easy enough because the background is black so I might actually use the brush to just go over this area just because of the color differences um, the hairs the little hairs aren't really major but I think just with the stamp tool it's just going to be too much of a color difference okay um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my previous image that I did and as I mentioned to you guys, you want to make sure that everything looks similar, that everything looks as a part of a story. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab the first three layers. I'm going to leave the hue saturation and the last curves just because they have a mask on it. So I'm going to copy that into the next photo to make sure that the color settings and all the other settings are there. Now I'm going to add the missing curve that made the photo slightly darker. Obviously, you know, you have to take into consideration that, um, especially when you're working with natural light, certain photos will look different um, because, you know, there might be more light, there might be less light. 
even between the two images here, uh, one of them was shot very close to the window and this one that I'm working on now was shot um, quite a quite much farther away from the window. So obviously the farther from the window you get, the, the more different the image is going to be, maybe the less highlights there's going to be and so on. Okay, so I have that and then I'm going to create the hue saturation layer and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab the skin and just, you know, kind of mask it up to make sure that it's not too colorful. Okay, and lastly, I'm going to grab my um, so alt, new layer, soft light, and here we go. And I'm just going to do very subtle um, highlights and shadows. Okay, and the last step is sharpening again. Smart sharpen, just go on her face and make sure that it's not too much. Again, we shot it on either 2.8 or 1.8, so um, it is quite soft. Um, now, if that's something that you want, you can always grab Liquify and you can just push the dress in a tiny bit. Usually when you're shooting bridal editorials, the sample sizes are quite bigger than the models because um, they're usually like a big size 10. So a lot of the time, um, the dresses are actually quite big on the model, so you have to clamp them and so on. So sometimes it needs a tiny bit of tweaking in Photoshop um, to make the dress look kind of right in the model. So we only need a tiny little bit, the dress fit quite well on Abby. Um, so yeah, um, so now we can save the photo and now you can see the two photos next to each other. Here we go, that's the final look. I'll create a little group. As you see, the changes aren't drastic, it's literally just tweaking the image um, and just making sure it's nice and intense. Um, and the same with the other one, if we create a group, here you go, it's nice and intense and that's all you need. You don't need anything super strong or anything. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel um, and maybe give me a follow on Instagram. I post all my newest stuff there so you'll never miss a thing. I hope you enjoyed this video um, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you soon.